Alrighty folks, welcome back for some more Technode from a Craft here on the TNFC Territory server. Today, going to do some crafting and get us a nice quality of life upgrade, and that is this guy right here. The electric refrigerated chest, which I'm told basically almost stops decay on food. So if we get this guy, hook him up to some power, make sure he always has power, then we should be able to put food in there and it should whoops forgot that's on fast mode sorry let's put this down to slow normal mode by the way I've been trying to remember to do that put that thing on normal mode while I'm around the base because you can accidentally break stuff really quickly with that anyway if we supply this thing with some power we should be doing good on our food and not have to worry about decay so much anymore uh, recipe for this is a little tough so I went ahead and made this up off camera uh, you're going to need a blue steel double sheet, a red steel double sheet, the uh, black steel double sheets, and the ultimate control circuit for mechanism, which is not a simple thing. Uh, so you have to have the elite control circuit and the advanced control circuit, and of course the basic one. Uh, fortunately, Sim has all of the tools to make this stuff, plus the, uh, by the way, atomic alloy. Yes, I was going to say, do I go one more? No, atomic alloys, which require infusing reinforced alloys with obsidian dust and this requires infusing enriched alloys with diamond dust yeah so you're gonna have to find those kimberlite mines and get your diamond dust and your obsidian dust and all that stuff uh, but we went ahead and did that uh, actually a while ago I've, I've had this around and I just been haven't gotten time haven't gotten the focus I guess not the time the focus to go hook it up because I got like five things I want to do all at once here by the way sneak peek we're not gonna mess with this today but um, there's a whole big Proof of concept thing over there. Doing some testing. It's going to be great. But uh, that'll be next time, maybe. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to power this thing. And I think I want to put it over here in the boarding house. Uh, Mickey has made a lovely little kitchen down here. I'll give you guys a quick tour of this place, actually, if you haven't seen it. So this is nice, beautiful little place. And we've got a little kitchen here. We can kind of, you know, belly up to the bar and get something to eat. Got the little cookie jar over there and a food prep surface. So if we had a nice refrigerator like right here or along the back wall or something, um, I think that would work out really well. And this is becoming more central to the general stuff that we're building at this point. So all the IE stuff is here. We're going to have higher tech tier over that away. So this should be a little bit better for the current stuff than down at the original base. Okay, so I have decided, and of course you can power it any way you want, but I've decided I don't want to run lines down there, like from the windmill all the way across down over here. I want to do it differently. So I wanted to play with the thermal electric generator from Industrial Engineering. And let's, actually, I opened it here so we can check it out. Uh, so it's going to take three steel ingots, some cupronical, it's copper nickel is what it is, cupronical, uh, or constantin. So Constantin is the immersive engineering basic um, metal, and then this pack has added in the Cupronical sheets so that you can, oh, I can't go to recipes from here, uh, so that you can automate that through um, the metal press and stuff with uh, TFC metals. Anyway, I'm going to make up two of these, and basically you put hot and cold stuff on the two different sides, and it makes power based off of how hot and how cold the liquids are next to it. Now, that being said, it gives you a list of things you can use uh, beyond just basic liquids. And you can use packed ice and ice and blocks of uranium and plutonium and plutonium and a lot of stuff we don't have. And I think we can get, we can either get ice or packed ice. I forget which one. Um, but I tried it in a creative world and it wasn't really much better than just using water. So we're going to go with just plain old water and do that for now. All right. So to make this, and I've already started some of this. Um, yeah. So again, we want to get to these. And to get to those, we need two ingots in the uh, metal, pull, metal press mold for plates to get those sheets. That'll be the easiest way. To get these, we want to do the dust method to get the dust. There you go. Copper and nickel quite easily does that. And actually, I already made up. Oh, there's another stack of half, well, stack of uh, wrought iron I was processing. I've already made up some uh, constant grit here. And of course, we're getting power from the heater. Uh, I'm just going to throw the wrought iron in here. And again, you can't place the wrought iron into the chest because it's TFC, but you can pipe it in, it looks like. Okay, back to this. 
Uh, we also need copper wire coils, which are going to take LV wire co coils around wrought iron, and that's going to take four copper around treated sticks, and we end up needing these a few times, so I've decided let's just make up a few extras, so we're going to have 32 of those, and we're going to want half of those around wrought iron, which I should have, yes, and there's our copper wire coils. Let's throw the rest in here. And what's next on the list? You know what I should be doing? Let's do it in here because uh, it'll be able to save this stuff as we go. Uh, which moved everything over for me. Thank you. Any eye moves over to avoid this, but now I don't see it. Thermo. There we go. That's the one we want to be making. Alright, so we got that. We're going to do the steel across the top, and then we just need those constants in place along the bottom. Uh, Alright, so we want to make two of these. And we're going to do it like so, and this was for, oh, for wires. So, we've been having some issues with wiring not working right, or not working reliably, and apparently the uh, immersive engineering wiring is a little, a little bit derpy from time to time. Let's get another redstone here. So, since we want to make sure we always have power to this thing, I'm not going to go with the immersive engineering wiring, although it looks super cool. Um, I've had a few times where we have to go in and like break a connector and reroute, rerun the exact same wire, replace the wire, um, because otherwise it, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't power correctly and there's no reason for it. So anyway, uh, so we're going to make up some basic universal cables, which will transfer 1.28 kilo RF per tick, which should be way more than we need for this, but of course you can always upgrade these for other things if you need to. With some enriched alloys, you can make them into the universal case, or advanced, and then elite, and ultimate for lots and lots of power. Anyway, I'm going to make a couple of those, and that's what we're going to use for our power cabling here. Now, let's get going on this. Oh, yep, you're done. Nice. Okay, I was just going to say, I wonder how much longer it has, but I think the plate mold must already be in here. Yes. All right, and we need five per, so we need ten, which is going to take twenty... Uh, nickel. Let's keep the rest as it is. Did I do that right? Yeah, I'm sure I did. Let's do 10 first to make sure I got the right thing going on here before I... Oh, I'm like, no, I don't. But yeah, there it is. It just took it a second to switch over. The graphics are a little out of sync right now for some reason. Anyway, there we go. There's the Cooper nickel sheets. Cooper sheets. I guess it's Cooper the way it's written there. But anyway. Alright, so if we surround you... Like this, we should get one thermal electric generator. Okay, so we do need to do the other ten. And we'll throw the last ten. Um, are these TFC? They are. So we'll put these on the ground, apparently, for now. wonder what was here before. Hmm, I don't know. Alright, we'll just throw those on the ground for the moment. And that should be finishing up and give us the last... Come on, there it is. Give us the last sheet we need. And... I don't know exactly where we're going to put this in the uh, the house yet, so I think what we're going to do is do a little proof of concept work. And I thought about where to do such proof of concept work since we're going to be messing with lava. I don't want to burn anything down. And I think down in here, in the bottom of our um, kaolinite mine, might be a good place to mess with it. The only thing that might burn is the support beams, which would be bad. But I think if we're down here, we're going to be plenty far away from them, so nothing will burn. And I honestly don't know if support beams burn or not. We should find that out. Um, maybe I'll do that in a minute. Okay, so what we want to do is put down our two thermal electric generators. Uh, obviously, we only need to start with one, but this is my plan. I want two of them. Uh, because they don't make a lot of power. So what you can do is actually use the same uh, same fluid block for both of these and then we're going to need of course to put fluid here and fluid here. And we'll get into the next stage of that in just a minute because there's actually something else we can do as well. So let us go ahead and pop down one of these tanks. I went and got lava as you can obviously see which by the way is not close Oh, this is cave mode. Give me day mode, please. There. Uh, it's not close. The only lava I know of is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 
There we go. Nine, nine screens away. Fortunately, it's not too far from Sim's place, and the teleporter gets us to Sim's place. So uh, it didn't take nearly as long as it could have. All right, so the blue steel bucket should get us some lava. And yes, good. All right, so we're going to put one lava block there, and we're going to share that block. And of course, we're going to want to cover that up when we do this for real. But for the moment, I think we'll be okay. Are we dropping frames? No. It's a little a little glitchy for some reason right now. I'm not quite sure why, but uh, whatever. We should be fine. Um, I want to make an infinite water source. Yeah, we'll just do it right here. And again, this is on slow mode slash normal mode right now. Uh, so it's not going at its full rate, full speed. But that's fine. Okay, so let's go ahead and plop down some water here. And some water here. And you know what? I'm going to go grab the um, capacitive ca current transformer. Yeah, current transformer, so we can see how much out power these are outputting. Um, and then I'll, I'll grab a uh, support beam as well. We'll see if that burns or not. And then I'll be right back with you guys. All right, guys. You know what? I don't feel like tearing down all the stuff we got set up up there already. So um, we're just going to go ahead and cheat in a couple pieces just for testing or just for demonstration here. Once we get this done, I'll, uh, of course, remove the extra pieces. So one of the things I want is a creative energy cube that is empty because uh, that's going to let us just pipe power into it and see how uh, how much power we get out of this thing. And then we're going to want the current transformer, so we'll grab one of those. So what I want to do is pop down current transformer like so. And we can probably just put this right here. I don't think we need... Um, I don't think we'll need a wire there. Maybe we will. We'll find out. Uh, so on these cu energy cubes, by the way, and you can make these uh, except for the creative one, of course, this side with that little bar, that's the output. They're, all the other sides are inputs. All right, so we should be making power right now. Let's go ahead and grab our legit cables here, and we'll pop that there and that there. And I have not actually tried to make sure that this would connect. It's not connecting, is it? Hmm. So we're going to have to do IE wiring. Okay. Well, I do have some IE wiring up. Come on, get to fast mode. I do have some IE wiring upstairs. Wow, that takes a long time. And it could burn. Um, that's fine. It's fine. These are cheap to make. If I do lose one, it won't be that big a deal. We're going to have to think about that, though, when we pick these up. We're definitely going to want to get rid of that source block first. Uh, okay, so we're going to want to on some IE cabling. Like I said, I do have some upstairs, but again, let's just uh, grab what we need for testing down here. Uh, okay, so we're going to need two wire connectors and um, a couple of MV, MV wires, but I don't see. Here we go. MV wire coils. And again, we will get rid of these when we're done. Let's put one there and one there, and then we will put this here and we're going to have to connect you to... Oops, we need more. Another connector and another wire, please. Okay. Right, thank you. Okay, now let's connect it to there. Cool, okay. So we now have one thermoelectric generator with lava and fresh water. And we are transferring 14... or creating and transferring through this current transformer 14 RF per tick. And yes, the 1 is on one line and the 4 is on the next line. So it's 14 RF per tick. And this guy being a creative one will never fill up. He's always going to be empty so we can play with this for as long as we would like. All right. Uh, the other side benefit of having lava around is it's going to create sulfur for us. And we're actually... Oh, I got it on fast mode. Do not do that. Uh, we're actually going to want to gather that sulfur here after a bit, but uh, for the moment, we're not going to mess with it. I think actually I'm going to use one of those block breakers and set it up next to the lava to uh, grab the sulfur for us. And we need that for a couple different recipes as well as for uh, gunpowder, which will be fun. Should be fun. All right, so now that we've got that set up, let's put another one there. Let's not get stuck on things. And... Check this out. Okay, so we're still doing 14 RF per tick, no change. Let's pop this down, and we're going to now do 
29 RF per tick. So I don't know if it's just like a little bit off or it's not, you know, based on this, there's some loss. I guess there is a little bit of loss in the cable, but over that length, it should be almost nothing. Anyway, this should give you close to 30 RF per tick. Now, I didn't bring all the pieces down to do this, but, um, and I'm not going to bother cheating them all in, but trust me. So I, uh, I did this again in Creative World. We've got six rows, and what I came up with was the total was 42 RF per tick. Okay, so if you just put one item in there, it takes a teeny tiny little bit of power, like not even enough for the current transformer to uh, register. If you put a whole row of items in there, in particular food, it will take uh, 7 RF per tick. And if you do another one, you get 14, etc., etc., up to 42. So unfortunately, one thermal electric generator not quite enough. It's going to give us 30, uh, well, just under 30, so I'm going to want to use both of them. And if we now, can I grab another wire? Yes. If we now hook this guy into there, we should now see 43 RF per tick, which is plenty. And I can actually add one more uh, lava block right there, actually, and it will increase even higher. So if we wanted to power something else, we'd be able to do that. So I think this is going to work out well. It'll be nice and compact. We can put it down underneath of everything and uh, won't have to have a big old windmill or, or water mill or wheel. We won't have to feed it, you know, uh, coal or anything like that. Just nice, nice little bit of passive power generation. And uh, that should, should keep our electric refrigerator going. So I wanted to kind of walk through all that with you guys and make sure I had all the pieces, which uh, we kind of do and kind of don't, I guess. <laughs> Uh, so I'll fix that here in just a second. But let's go ahead and just make sure it will actually connect up. I think it won't connect. The, the cable is definitely connected to that. And this is mechanism, so I'm sure the cables will connect to it. Yeah, they just didn't want to connect to this current transformer, which is kind of a special block. So uh, I think we'll be okay with these cables. If not, I'll have to use the uh, immersive engineering stuff. But... I'm a little concerned that that may cause us problems. All right, so let's go ahead and put you on there and you on there, and boom, there we go. So we've got 4.8 kilo RF in our electric refrigerator, and you can actually put an energy cube in here to give it a bunch of uh, buffer internally, I think. That's what the little lightning bolt is for. All right, so here's the concept. Oh, it's you that's got the weird bounding box. Okay, ah, don't jump on that, jeez. Uh, okay, so here's our proof of concept. So we're going to put a couple source blocks of lava down in um, the basement, or sub-basement, put some water around it, and then I'm going to put a couple of block breakers to grab the sulfur. Obviously we don't need the current transformer, that was just for testing. And that should pretty much do it. So let me pick up the lava and clean up stuff down here real quickly. Put you back in there, and you back in there. And I guess I didn't actually say, but these are uh, portable tanks from Mechanism. So they're not too hard to make, but you need a, a few little bits and pieces to make it. You can just break them with a um, pickaxe or whatever, and they just pop up into your inventory. And of course they're portable, so everything's fine. All right, so just to finish out here, let's see. You are not legitimate, so let's get rid of you. And that, yes, because I'm still in cheat mode, that just, just deletes it. It doesn't drop it on the floor. Uh, same with you and all oh, the connectors. Grab you, you, and you. All right. All cheaty things go away. We don't want you around here anymore. Oh, and probably the creative energy cube. Although, an empty creative energy cube, that would actually be a fun, like, HQM reward. Here's a creative energy cube that's empty and can never be filled. <laughs> Okay, it amused me at least. All right, that's it for the moment. Let me, uh, I'm going to have to wait until I can talk to Miki and find out um, where exactly we can set all this up, what works for her, and then we'll go ahead and put that together, and I'll show you how that goes a little bit later. Be back in a bit. All righty, folks, back, and we have official word from the builder and keeper of the boarding house. This is the official place for the refrigerated chest. You might notice that it has 130 RF on the whale tooltip there, and it's rapidly running out. Right now, these blackberries have 0.1% decay, but we just ran out of power. 
and we're going to leave them in there for a little while. I believe that if it doesn't have power, these are actually going to decay quite quickly. I'm not 100% sure if they'll decay right in here or if it'll be when we take them out of the chest. Uh, well, let's just try that for a second. So if I pull them out, it's only been a second, but yeah, okay, still, still 0 0.1. So just to demonstrate what happens if we don't have power and to kind of test it too, because uh, I heard what you're supposed to do, but I haven't actually seen it myself. Uh, so we're going to run that without power for the moment and go downstairs. So we were, I was told that I can go ahead and do this as long as I don't burn down the house. And since this is all uh, wood, I thought it probably is best to kind of hide this underneath of everything. So got our power cable coming down here. We can even look in here from here, can't we? 0 0.1 still. Hmm. I thought that was going to like decay instantly or something. And I've got a ladder over here, which is wood, but it's far enough away, I think, that we'll be okay. So just been digging out the basement a bit. I guess, you know what, so I'm going to do it over here. Let me go ahead and uh, knock this back one more level. And the disassembler is great for digging this stuff, but it's also almost too fast. So if you click in the wrong spot, um, yeah, things go away really quickly with it. All right, so let's put the uh, thermoelectric generator there and there. And that's going to mean we're going to want power or liquid blocks there, 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 and here. All right, now I'm starting to lose my place, so let's get these down. And let's see, we're going to need the lava tank. Going to need a blue steel bucket. And we want some of the lava to be near blocks where we can get some sulfur off of it. I'm not going to automate that just yet, but at some point we're going to want to automate the sulfur. Okay, so we want to do that and that, and then we're going to want that for liquid block as well. All right, that should work. I just noticed it's it's one two three, one two three. It's kind of just a diagonal thing. Any rate, so I'd like the lava. If I put it there, I kind of like it over on the side where it's not you know we're not going to be tempted to hit, get into it. But I also want it over here so that more. Um, Sulfur will spread. Let's do this. Let's put it here and here. So that's got two lava blocks. That oh wait, that's only got one lava block. So we're actually going to want it like this because I, I want to use less lava than water because well, water's super easy to come by. Speaking of which, uh, probably don't really need this here, but we'll go ahead and make the infinite source again because otherwise I don't have enough buckets to fill it up and I didn't fill a tank up so here we go alright so if we do that and that and that and that let's not get our feet in the lava uh, okay so hot cold hot cold hot cold hot cold that should be working now and careful not to accidentally throw something in the lava grab a couple more of these cables I was gonna run it that way but then of course we changed Directions a bit, so let's get rid of this one. Oh, I'm going to do that because I will instantly break the gravel behind it if I do that. All right, so we're going to do that, that, like this, and up there. And we should be good. So I can't see it from down here, obviously. Let's go up a layer, layer, up a level, and take a look. All right, so they only went one tenth of a percent decay, and now we're powered again. So, okay, well. I had heard that if you run out of power, it just like quickly, really quickly decays. But looks like it's not that big a deal. So we should be pretty set for sto uh, food storage now, which is good because we haven't really been paying attention to trimming all the decay. And pretty much all of our fruit has decayed away uh, 100%. So I've rescued a few things. I think there's one more thing of cherries down there. Um, but like the red apples and all that are, are all completely gone at this point. Uh, however, it is about that time of year, so we're going to be getting another harvest of apples shortly. So it's not like we're going to run out of fruit, but it is uh, just slightly annoying to have to keep messing with it. I thought I had some smooth... Oh, no, I used it upstairs. Do we have smooth stone in here? Yes. All right, so what I would like to do is... Place you here, and actually, there's a cable over this already, so we can't fall into that one. That I, hmm, 
I might just use a cable for that. Just pop you right there. Not that we need it, but I think that'll work. That little loop shouldn't cause any problems, I don't think. Hmm. It might. I'll keep an eye on it for a little bit, but I think we're going to be okay with that. And we'll break that. Go back upstairs. Oh, by the way, I'm still carrying my axe because uh, the atomic disassembler doesn't do TFC damage. It does basic Minecraft damage, so it's probably like plus seven or something, which is great for Minecraft, but not good for TFC when you're doing, you know, 360 damage or whatever. So <laughs> I keep switching back to that. Anyway, there we go. So we've got some basic power up to should be should be pretty solid power up to our um, electric refrigerator. We sh should be good to go. Last thing I did want to double check, and I already looked at this once, so we should be good. Uh, I just hit the F9 thing twice to verify. Well, now that's interesting. Did not expect sulfur to show up on the roof like that. I expected it on the ground, but anyway. Um, actually, we don't need this now. There's lava here, do we? Okay. Yeah, F9. So all of this and the refrigerator should be in the same chunk. That means that all of that stuff loads at the same time. So here's one chunk and here's the, the other. Or here's the one that's in and over there is the next chunk. Uh, so the cabling's in the same chunk, the refrigerator's in the same chunk, and the power generation's in the same chunk. Uh, if you don't have that, you might end up with things where the refrigerator loaded, but the chunk next to it didn't, and then the power can't be transmitted, and, you know, whatever. And, uh, yeah, you might end up losing a bunch of food that way. So probably a good idea to do that. Might Almost might not be a bad idea to stick a, uh, a capacitor or an energy cube right next to the refrigerator, too. And I'm looking for my sandwiches. Here we are. Uh, just as a buffer so you can kind of keep an eye on it and see see if it ever uh, something goes wrong and the energy cube starts losing its uh, charge or whatever. But we should be good to go. So we've got our food prep surface here. We can put our goodies in the electric refrigerated chest. And then, yeah, we just move this corner over one so we can grind up flour and make bread and stuff with that. So I think... That's that's the weirdest looking outside ever. Is it foggy out? Oh. It's just the white stained glass. It makes it look very foggy through there. That's interesting. Alright, I think that's it for now. Oh wait, I gotta show you the tile. Did we show maybe maybe you saw the tile in a different one, but it keeps changing. So this is Carpenter's Blocks, Carpenter's Tile dot name, whatever. And it it's weird because you can't break it. The the atomic disassembler can't break it. Uh, but you can use the carpenter's hammer to change the pattern, and uh, Miki keeps changing the pattern on us. So every time we come into her little reception desk here, she has a different mosaic tile uh, artwork thing behind her, so it's kind of funny. All right, guys, that's it. I think we're good to go. Nice little uh, convenience uh, uh, quality of life upgrade here, so we shouldn't have to mess with trimming decay and uh, food as much anymore. All right, folks, back actually for just another couple minutes. I uh, it's a couple days later here, and we just ran into a bit of a problem. So I want to give you a couple updates. First of all, when I had the power cables on top of the lava, it would not generate any sulfur. So you can't have a block directly over the lava, even if it's a transparent thing like a power cable. So this block is currently not creating any sulfur, but that one is because there's an air gap. So you can see we've got some sulfur here. And I'm having some weird rendering glitches, because this is sulfur. You can see the particles. It's actually because of this carpenter's block. I don't know why, but it is. So if I take that off, I don't know. I don't know what it's from. At any rate, uh, the carpenter's blocks are on this because of another little problem that just happened. TFC water freezes. And ice apparently is not uh, on the list for things that work with the thermoelectric generator. So as soon as the water freezes into ice, the generator stops working and you stop getting power which is obviously not a good thing. Let me see if I can just break this by hand. I, I usually use a uh, pickaxe, but yeah, okay, you need a pickaxe. There it is. It finally came up. Uh, we need a pickaxe to harvest that, but that's fine. Obviously, we harvested it not too long ago because basically that entire room was full of sulfur last time. Uh, so I want to show you that and mention that. Ignore the million red dots on the screen. I'll tell you what that's all about probably in the next episode. Uh, so anyway, yeah, this guy came up and had no power left. And um, fortunately, I was here just as it froze, and I was actually te checking on the crops and stuff. So uh, I was able to get down there and fix it. But I wanted to show that you guys that. And I figured while we're at it, why don't we put together a 
basic energy cube and put that in there so that we uh, don't have that. Well, we could still run out of power generation, but we'll have a large, much larger buffer and we can keep an eye on that uh, and have a longer time to see if something went wrong. Uh, so anyway, crafting of this, is, this is mechanism of course, and the steel casing takes a, an osmium and some steel plates, not a big deal. These, by the way, energy tablets, and these things pop up all over the place. Um, they're kind of a pain to craft just because it's three different types of metal. Uh, you need zinc, gold, and copper, of course. And you need these enriched alloys, which is steel, basically. Uh, steel plus a little bit of redstone in that infuser. Uh, so basically, every time you see one of these things, it's a couple of steel, three other kinds of metal. And Sim actually made up a barrel full of these, 64 of them, because they only stack in one. Um, a barrel of those completely full a couple days ago, and I just went over there and grabbed those two. I think I've used maybe six total. And, um, hmm, will that not charge in there? Maybe it will only discharge in there. I thought it would charge in there as well. Let's go give it a little bit of power. Um, yeah, I, I've only, I think, used about six of them. I just looked. He's got like 20 left in that barrel. So, yeah, it probably makes sense. Oh, we were having a little uh, remodeling here of things because the the uh, bunkhouse is kind of more at this level. The tunnel is more at this level. That over there is more at this level. So we're going to kind of do a little remodeling here, but that's uh, a work in progress. Uh, where am I going? Here we can. I've been trying not to show this. All right, I'm going to show it and then just not say anything about it. And those of you who know what it is are going to know. And those of you who uh, don't know what it is will have to wait for. I'm not even sure I'm going to do this next episode. It might be a couple episodes down the road. Now I have two problems. One problem is I don't have my pickaxe, so I can't pick that back up, and I don't have a hammer. Second problem is it filled up completely. Hey, Mickey, can I have my uh, atomic dis disassembly thinger? Please? Thank you. I said you should use that because it's way faster than doing all that by hand. But I kind of need it now because I want to pick this up. Oh, okay, so I can solve both of those problems actually. So, bam, we can pick it up. Second way to solve the problem is we put you in here and there. It's sucking some of the power out to recharge this guy. And then we will be able to check and see if that charges or just stores power when it's in there. And apparently it's on fast. Well, of course it's on fast mode because she's digging a million things. All right, there we go. So last thing, let's go back and check this out. I know there's red dots everywhere and it's annoying as all heck, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that next episode. And what's going on there? Okay, let's put you back up in here. 5, 11, 5, 10. Hmm. I don't know why it's draining power, because this was full. This may not work. I may have to put this in line, which is fine. I'll just put it in line down below with uh, the wires. All right, so here's, here's what I guess is happening. When it's like this, we're getting 4.76 KRF for whatever reason. And when we put this in here, it's trying to ch charge that last 0.04, and now we're getting 4.8k. Okay, fine. We'll, we'll, we'll fix it. Got to remember in fast mode here, be careful. Because uh, I would only be in fast mode, so let's set it to normal, and we can put it right here. I'll go down and get that in a second. Okay, so if I place it facing down... Yes, okay, so the little bar is the output, all the other sides are inputs. Should be charging up now. Yep, slowly. We don't have a lot of power down there, but we're charging up slowly. And this will be a nice buffer for the chest. So I'm glad I checked that, because I thought you could just put it in there and it would buffer up, and then if we lost power downstairs, it would use power from that uh, cube. But it doesn't seem to be quite the case. All right, folks, I think that's it with the uh, update and upgrades and all the other stuff going on here. Plus, now we can, if we need to, just pop in here and use up some power. And bam, there we go. So we got a nice big buffer, a huge buffer for, uh, what is that, 800,000? Yeah, 800,000 RF. It's a ridiculously large buffer for up there. But uh, if we do run into problems where ice freezes again, or ice, water freezes again, or somehow this turns off, or the, I was going to say if the cables mess up, but then again, if the cables mess up, all bets are off. Who knows what will happen? Uh, but I think we're good. So that's it for this episode. Hope you all enjoyed 
give me comments and uh, let me know what you're liking or what you want to see in the next one. At any rate, I'll catch you next time.